Well, the SGLT twos have come on the scene as a really a fascinating group of drugs that were originally developed for diabetics and tested in diabetics to lower hemoglobin A1C, which they do do. And dapagliflozin was one of the earlier SGLT2 inhibitors that was actually tested in a dose ranging trial. Uh, found that the dose of 10 milligrams once a day doesn't need to be up titrated. Uh, did the best job of changing uh, the, the hemoglobin A1C. However, when they tested this in a very large trial, initially the first trial was called Empareg, and it wasn't dapagliflozin, it was empagliflozin. And the curves were so surprising in how well they reduced heart failure hospitalizations in a group of patients that may not have had heart failure, but may have had some other cardiovascular disease. Fast forward moving, uh, dapagliflozin came out with their own trial called DAPA-HF, uh, and the FDA approved these drugs for HFREF. Uh, and now more recently, we have data for HFREF on both dapagliflozin and empagliflozin, and those have become that fourth piece of the pillars of care. So there are a couple of extra drugs to think about. Um, a couple of years ago, the FDA approved Verisiguat. Verisiguat is a stimulator of soluble one-il cyclase. Um, think of it as a vasodilator, basically. Uh, and the trial was positive for reduction in hospitalizations. It was called the Victoria trial, uh, but no changes in mortality. And who were these patients? They were patients who had primarily been in the hospital, decompensated, uh, and they had a very high event rate. This has been one of the highest event rates. Uh, the drug is pretty well tolerated, uh, and those are for the patients who remain symptomatic, regardless of the foundational pillars of care. And in that trial, it was for HFREF, and that's what it's approved for. We had another drug that we had some great hopes for, called Omcaptin Macarbol, very different drug that acts in the actin-myosin binding. Um, however, there was no mortality and there were some questions about it working better in the patients with the lowest ejection fractions, which I would kind of welcome, but the FDA did not approve that drug. Other than that, uh, we now have um, newer MRAs, such as finerenone. Uh, which may not have the same effects, say, on hyperkalemia or the same effects on gynecomastia. And that's really what's on the docket right now, uh, being talked about, being studied. Verisiguat was put into the guidelines already as that additional therapy if your patient is still symptomatic on the four foundational pillars. Mm -hmm.